Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of the course in which I will show you the best game controller and camera settings. It is quite essential to change these options because uh, it is quite impossible to make progress in FIFA 21 without uh, changing them. So let's dive straight into it. We go into Customize, Settings, Customize Controls and the first option is FIFA Trainer. Uh, you Generally you want to hide it because uh, if you show it, it, it will distract you during your games and you will achieve poor results. So just hide it. If you are a total beginner, you bought the game yesterday or the day before yesterday, uh, you can show it like for one or two weeks to get used to basics but then remember to get back to the options and hide it. Next one is uh, timed finishing. Uh, you can leave it on. Uh, it is quite important uh, to, to, to use timed finishing while scoring free kicks and penalties. So next one is next player switch indicator 100% on. 100% on because if, if you turn it off, it uh, will be pretty much impossible to, to defend. Pass block assistance, it's okay, leave it on. Auto switching. Uh, air balls and loose balls is the, the, the correct option, but if you are a total beginner, you can use auto. But then, after some practice, you become a better player, you go back to the options and change it to air balls or, and loose balls. Uh, auto switching move assistance mm. none none uh, will be okay if you are a pro player okay but if you are a beginner just change this option to high May maybe if you become better you, you can change it to low and maybe then to none but uh, it, it's it's okay if it's high J jockey 100% assisted without assisted jockey it's it's very hard to play the game out of flare pass here you change it to off because if it's on, so sometimes these passes are just too slow, too weak, and, and can be just broken. So so turn this option off. Auto clearances, leave it on. It's it's very useful. Auto shots, you, you don't need auto shots. You can press the B button or or the, the circle button by by yourself. So so turn this option off. Player lock, it's a brand new option in FIFA 21, I will, I will explain it uh, later in the course, it, it must be on. Uh, the same with, with Agile Dribbling, assisted headers, yes, leave it on. Right stick switching, player relative, it, it's okay. Ground pass assistance, assisted, yes. Frugal assistance, um, I prefer uh, semi because uh, if it's assisted you can't uh, uh, <clears throat> you you have you have no control of the pass power, but uh, if it's semi, you have you have this control, so it's semi. Shot assistance, uh, leave it assisted. Cross assistance again, the same situation as if uh, as when we are talking about through ball assistance. Uh, leave it uh, semi. Low pass assistance, assist yes. Safe assistance, oh semi. Really? No, you, you, you have to change it to assisted. Next option is analog sprint. Uh, so read the description together. Turning an analog sprint allows you to control how fast you sprint. The further you hold the button assigned to the sprint action, the faster the player will run. So let's have an example. You have Leo Messi. His sprint speed is about 85 and you have this option on your Leo Messi can run like 75, 76, 77, maybe 83, maybe 84. But if you turn this option off, he will always run with his maximum sprint speed, that is 85. So generally we want our players to run as fast as possible, so I strongly advise you to turn this option off. Defending, tactical defending is perfect, perfectly fine. And pass receiver lock. We have to change it to early because it is easier to perform a first time, uh, first touch skill move with uh, the early option. It is quite important, so so just change it. 
Uh, now we go into controller settings and I use classic for attack and classic for defense. Uh, I strongly advise you to, to use the same because the whole course will be based on these uh, classic controller settings. So now we go to the game settings and we have the camera. Uh, so I strongly advise you to use telebroadcast uh, and camera settings not default, you have to change it to custom and then camera height between 17 and 20, you, you can use 20 and camera zoom between 3 and, and 0, so we can use 0 and uh, that's the first option, okay? Uh, the second option is uh, co-op it's the shortcut of cooperation you can use cooperation as well but uh, the telebroadcast is better in my opinion and here like 14 and, and 4 will be okay that's the second option and uh, that's it for this episode thank you for paying attention and see you in the next one Hello everyone, it's me again. Welcome to the next episode in which I will show you formations and tactics I use in all of my FIFA 21 games. I'm not sure if these formations and tactics are the best possible, but I am sure that they are at least 100 times better than the default ones. In my opinion, playing with appropriate, appropriate formations and tactics is the key to win more games and generally make huge progress. This is why I ask you to follow the tutorial carefully and try to use these settings in your own games. So let's go to squad actions, custom tactics, and then press L2 LT button to edit your game plans. The first thing we'll focus we'll focus on is the ultra ultra defensive 4 2 3 1 narrow formation uh, i use it only when i have uh, one goal advantage after minute 70 it helps me to defend and not concede goals in the late stage of the game in the late stage of the game so here we have balanced white four bars out of ten depth the same, 4 bars out of 10, offensive style balance, white 7 out of 10, players in the box 4 out of 10, corners 1, free kicks 1. Formations, instructions, yes. Goal, goalkeeper comes for crosses, not balance but comes for crosses, and uh, sweeper keeper. Central defenders stay back while attacking and stay back while attacking. Uh, right back, stay back while attacking and the rest is default. The same left back, stay back while attacking. Central defensive midfielders, cut passing lines, stay back, stay back while attacking and the rest, ah, uh, and cover center, not, not cover wing, cover center, both of them. So central attacking midfielder come back on defense and get into the box for cross. Uh, left midfielder stay on the edge of box for cross and uh, come on back defense. The same right midfielder and 
one striker getting behind and stay forward. So this is that's all for ultra defensive formation. So next we have the defense formation. It's the formation uh, with which I start all of my games. It's four one two one two narrow formation. Uh, and in this particular example, the key is to play many short passes and rescue the ball as soon as possible. So defensive style is press after possession ball, white 5, depth 4, and offense, offensive style balance, white 5, players in the box 6, corners 2, free kicks 2. And instructions, uh, goalkeeper the same. Basically, it's a, a goalkeeper always the same instructions. Uh, central defenders stay back while attacking. The default settings are okay. Here you have to change uh, run type to overlap to the right back and to the left back. Central defensive midfield midfielder you have to change attacking support to stay back while attacking and. Uh, cover center, uh, right central midfielder, you have to change support on crosses, stay on the edge of box for cross and cover center, left central midfielder, stay back while attacking and cover center, central offensive midfielder, stay forward and get into the box for cross, strikers, only one thing to change, getting behind and getting behind. That's all for the defensive tactic. Let's move on to the uh, third option. And this is classic for, for two. Uh, I basically use it when, when I can see that the previous one is not working properly and I cannot go through enemy's defense. It gives uh, you the perfect alternative to 4 one to one two narrow formation because you can use your wingers when the center is blocked. I basically change between second and third formations for a couple of times during one game. So let's see, it's defensive style balanced, 5 wide, 5 depth, offense style wide, 5 players in the box, 4 corners 2, free kicks 2. Let's see the instructions. Keeper the same, central cent central defenders, no changes. Here right back, stay back while attacking, left back, stay back while attacking, left midfielder, getting behind and stay on the edge of box for cross. Right back the same, getting behind and stay on the edge of box for cross. Central midfielders, <coughs> balanced attack and cover center. Here, one of them, stay back while attacking the other one, balanced attack and both cover center. Forwards, only one option to change, getting behind and the other one as well, getting behind. The last one is 4-3-1-2 formation, I use it after minute 80 when I'm losing, it is very offensive tactic. It is very easy to score many goals while using it, but to be honest it is even easier to lose goals while using it too often. This is why I strongly advise you to use it only when you are losing and only after minute 80. So defensive style, constant pressure, white 6, depth 8. Offense, offensive style, long ball, white, 6 out of 10, players in the box, 7, corners, 4, free kicks, 4. Let's see the instructions. Keeper, the same. Center backs, no, change, no changes. Right back, join the attack and overlap. Left back, join the attack and overlap. Central defensive midfielder, balanced attack. Cover center, and that's basically it. Right central midfielder, get forward and stay on edge of box for cross. Left 
central midfielder, get forward and stay on edge of box for a cross. Central attacking midfielder, stay forward and get into the box for a cross. And strikers, get in behind and stay forward. In the end of this part, I want to tell you about two more very important things. Firstly, to change your tactics during your games, you have to use arrows on your controller. If you want to use your offensive formation, you have to double tap your right arrow like this. Like this, okay? If ultra offensive, then triple tap right arrow by analogy. Defensive tactic will be activated if you double tap left arrow and ultra defensive if you triple tap it. So that's one thing. Secondly, you can change the position of your players in every tactic. We just go to custom tactics and uh, for example attacking formation. We go to formations and then you have to use your Y or triangle button to swap between players. For example, like this or like this. That's pretty simple, but uh, uh, we can have an example. In offensive tactic, I play Maximin on the left and in defensive tactic, I play him as a central attacking midfielder. It can be really confusing, but it basically means that in the moment I activate in the game defensive tactic, he will play as a central midfielder. And then when I change it into offensive formation, he will run to the left wing and pl start playing as a left winger. That can be crucial difference and that can distract your opponent and win you many games. So that's it for this episode and see you in the next one. Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode in which I will show you how and when to use the brand new option in FIFA 21 called Agile Dribbling. It is the easiest and the most effective skill move in the game, that's why I decided to make a dedicated video focusing on it. As you can see, you can beat the entire enemy defense using only one simple trick. Trust me, it's never easy to defend against Agile Dribbling, so make sure to pay attention in the next few minutes. To perform this skill move, you have to hold R1 RB button and use your left stick to change directions. Players with higher dribbling stats will perform this skill faster and better, but you can use it with any player in FIFA 21. It generally helps you to find more space on the field, create more goal scoring chances and to control the whole game. So let's see how you can use it in practice. Look at the first example. Nothing is really happening here. It looks like there is no way to get through an enemy's defense. Here I used agile drib dribbling to open passing lane and the whole situation ended in scoring an easy goal. The next situation is the perfect example of what you should do when there is no good pass to make. Just use agile dribbling to protect the ball until one of your teammates will show up in good position. I can assure you that if I didn't use agile in this situation, I would definitely lose the ball. As in the previous example, the whole thing ended in an easy goal. 
Here the defender is placed perfectly. It might seem that there is no way to cut inside from the wing, but Marshall performed an outst outstanding solo dribble using only R1, RB and left stick and I completely confused my opponent and scored the goal. It is a perfect example that using only Agile can destroy whole enemy defense. Here my opponent was simply hopeless. He tried to rescue the ball three times in this situation and he simply failed. The solo rounds you can make using only one button are just amazing. To sum up, Agile dribbling can help you to beat your opponent in several different ways. For example, you can open new passing lanes or you can protect the ball and wait for your teammates to join the attack. In my opinion, it is the best new option in FIFA 21, which gives you endless possibilities in creating your attacks. It is very hard to defend against it, and it is very simple to learn how to use it properly in your games. Without using Agile, it is simply impossible to play FIFA on high level. I can assure you that even players in Division 1 and Foot Champions have huge problems while defending against the Agile. Once again, it is the easiest and most effective skill move. That's why try to use it in your own games. I promise you that you will see an instant progress in your own games and you will become a better player only by using Agile more often. That's all for this episode. Thank you for paying attention and see you in the next one. Hello everyone, welcome to the next part of the course in which I will show you how to score and save penalties and how to perform corners and free kicks. Whether we like it or not, set pieces are the part of football and there are some very simple tricks that can help you to get better in this part of the game. We will begin with penalty saves. You can move your goalkeeper using left stick and you can perform a save by moving both left and right sticks to the same directions. The best way to increase your chances for saving the penalty is to move your goalkeeper to one direction just before the shot and then try to search in the other side. It helps you to increase the probability of saving the shot because you cover the center and the left or right side of the goal. This is why you have 66% of saving the shot. If you just stand in the middle and choose only one side before the shot, you will have only 33% of saving the shot. It is a crucial difference. The other important thing is that you can predict where your opponent will shoot by moves of, by moves of his head. For example, if he looks to the left, your opponent in this moment is aiming at this side of the goal, but experienced players usually look at one side and shoot at the other side, but that's basically the guessing game. Now let's focus on sh shooting the penalty, it also is very easy. Here I have only one advice for you. It is easier to control where the ball goes when you move left stick close to the ground. By doing so, ju you just Minimalize the probability of missing the shot. The next thing we'll focus on is free kicks. It is very hard to score a goal from free kick. Firstly, if the distance to the goal is more than 27 meters, 
Just pass the ball to your nearest teammate and continue your positional attack. It is very unlikely that you will score direct free kick goals from this distance. But if you are closer than 27 meters, you can try to score a direct free kick goal using this technique. First step is to use your right stick to change your player's position. Secondly, you have to put the mark just above the crossbar and then hold circle B button for between 2 and 3 bars of power. The next step is to move your right stick up in order to give the ball the proper rotation. And the last thing is to time finish your shot. You can do this by tapping circle and B button just before the shot. It is quite important because even if you tap it wrong, it's still better than not tapping it at all. The whole process might, might be a little confusing, but as I said before, it's not easy to score goals from free kicks. You need to practice a lot if you want to do this. Now let's focus on corners. The first option, which in my opinion is worse, is to perform a long corner. It is quite simple. You just hold your square X button for between two and three bars of power and you try to find your tallest and strongest player in the penalty box. To be honest, it works very rarely. The second, in my opinion, the better option is to use the short pass and then try to dribble past defenders and eventually score the goal. Trust me, I tried both options many times and I feel that in the second option I have just more, much more control of what I'm doing. That's all for this episode. Thank you for paying attention and see you in the next one. Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode in which I will show you the most effective shooting techniques in FIFA 21. The first technique is called the power shot. It's extremely easy because all you need to do is press circle B button and use your left stick to direct the ball. The optimal power is between 2 and 3 bars but slightly closer to 2. To be honest, it is the most effective technique to score goals if you are inside the penalty box. Don't forget to stop holding R2, RT button when shooting. The balance is also very important. The body position should look very natural in order to perform a high quality shot. Next, we have chip shot. It is generally quite good, but only if you see the enemy's goalkeeper run too far away from the goal. To perform this type of shot, you need to press L1, LB and circle B buttons. This time, the power should be a little bit less than in the previous example. Next, we have driven shot. In my opinion, it is less effective than the power shot, but you can try it and judge it by yourselves. You just need to press L1, LB, R1, RB and circle B buttons simultaneously. That's it. That's all about trigger shots. Next, the fourth type of shooting is called finesse shot. To perform this type of shot, you need to press R1, RB and circle B buttons. 
It is very effective when you have players who have good technique, like for example Leo Messi or Bruno Fernandes. Next we have headers. Trust me, just trust me, it's not a good way to score goals in FIFA 21. You will struggle a lot while trying to do so. Finally, we have some goals from outside the box. Unfortunately, I don't have good news for you. The only way you can score goals from outside the box is by using the finest shots and only by using good players. It's pretty much impossible to perform long shots with other techniques. The last thing we will focus on is one-on-one -on -one versus goalkeeper situations. Generally, there are many, many ways to deal with it. You can perform very skill moves to beat the goalkeeper, or you can just shoot the ball with circle B buttons. However, in my opinion, the safest way to score a goal in one-on-one -on -one situation is to pass the ball to your teammate and then score an easy goal an easy goal while there is no goalkeeper in goal. So that's basically it. That's the end of the episode. Thank you for paying attention and see you in the next one. Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture in which I will show you the best passing techniques in FIFA 21. There are basically two things that you should remember when using any type of pass. First is timing. Wrong timing can make your pass inaccurate. Second is direction. Wrong direction also can cause you a lot of trouble. So first we have a normal ground pass. You can perform it by pressing X, A button in the same time using your left stick to choose the direction of the pass. You don't really have to worry about the power of the pass because it's assisted, so it doesn't really matter. You can use it pretty much in every situation of the game, in every single part of the pitch. So moving on, we have the driven pass. In order to perform this type of pass, you have to press X, A button and R1, RB button simultaneously. Especially in FIFA 21, it is important to use many driven passes during your games. By using it in the middle of the pitch, you can build your attacks faster and as a result cause more troubles for your enemy's defense. You can also use it as a final pass to your striker. It's really effective because he will receive the ball faster, so his chances for scoring the goal increase. The downside of this type of pass is accuracy. Unfortunately, it can be less accurate than the normal ground pass. So, the third type of passing is through ball. You can use it by tapping triangle Y button. Remember that the power of the pass matters here. Use it only when the receiver of the pass has a lot of free space ahead of him. This pass can make your attacks faster because you pass the ball on an open space and the receiver of the pass won't lose time while waiting for the ball. Using it in the middle of the pitch can be quite risky but it's a great option to activate your wingers or strikers. So moving on, the next type 
of the pass is a loop through pass. In order to perform it, make a normal through pass plus L1, LB button. It is not as overpowered as in the previous versions of FIFA, but still it's worth to know it. I basically use it only when the defender blocks my normal through pass. In this situation you can lob the entire defense and score an easy goal. Now I would like to speak about crosses. To perform a normal cross you just press square X button on your controller. To be honest, it's not as effective as a driven cross pass. You can make it by using square X button plus R1 RB button. Now listen carefully, it's an absolute game changer. I scored maybe more than 30% of all goals using this pass. Learn it, try it and start using it in your own games. The plan is fairly simple. You run with your winger and then you perform a driven cross to score a beautiful volley. What is even more impressive? It works pretty much every time. You must try it. It is maybe even more overpowered than agile. Trust me. Now let's focus on lofted pass. All you need to do is double tap your X A button. These type of passes are really helpful when there are many defenders in the penalty box. In this situation, this pass will be harder to cut. Also, when the receiver gets the ball, he can strike quicker. The last type of the pass is XA plus L1 LB button. It is also a game changer. After the player makes the pass, he immediately starts running towards the goal with his maximum sprint. It makes a crucial difference because your opponent has two players to worry about. One with the ball and the other one running towards the goal. It is very hard to defend against this. I strongly advise you to learn this type of pass because as I said earlier, it's a game changer. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for paying attention and see you in the next one. Hello everyone, welcome to the next part of the course in which I will explain you how to defend properly in FIFA 21. The most important thing you should learn from this episode is the jockey movement. Trust me, defending doesn't exist without jockey. It's simply impossible to defend without this simple trick. All you need to do is hold L2 LT button and use your left stick to change directions. You can also perform speed jockey by doing normal jockey plus hold R2 RT. To be honest, speed jockey is even more overpowered and generally most of the times you will use speed jockey rather than normal jockey. It is a key for high performance defending. I strongly advise you to start using it every time you lose the ball. It's important because you can change direction quicker and rescue the ball sooner. So once again, the first rule of defending is to use jockey as soon as you lose the ball. Remember it and start doing it. The second thing I would like to mention in this episode is player switch. You can do it in two different ways. You can use 
I'll one, I'll be button or your right stick. I strongly advise you to use the first option because it is a lot easier than the second one. Many pro players recommend to use right stick more often and they are probably right, but only if you are an experienced player. If you are a beginner, first learn how to switch between players with L1 LB button. Moving on, it's time for slide tackles. To perform slide tackle, you need to press square X button on your controller. Use it only when you have to do this. Remember, jockey is the key. I have seen many beginners doing slide tackles all the time while defending. Don't do this unless you want to lose many games. Of course, it's a part of defending, but the greatest of defenders, Paolo Maldini, once said, if I have to make a tackle, I have already made a mistake. I completely completely agree with this statement. Now we have standing tackles. To perform them, you need to press OB button while defending. I generally recommend you not to use it too often because in this version of FIFA, it's simply unnecessary. You can rescue the ball easily without touching your OB button, especially if you are in your own penalty box. Don't try to rescue the ball using standing tackles. You can easily make a foul and concede a penalty kick. As now we understand the basics, let's move on to something harder. There are three more things you need to understand and learn in order to defend properly. First, cutting the passing lines is crucial. Second, if there is a through ball threat, you should always cut it. And third, keeping the right distance between you and your opponent is very important. We can assume that this distance is about 2 meters. So look at the first example of cutting the passing lane. Here is the crucial moment. I didn't attack my opponent. I just cut the passing lane and I rescued the ball incredibly easily. Now let's analyze the other situation. Here we can see that my opponent wanted to pass a through ball to his teammate. Instead of attacking the player with the ball, I cut the through ball thread and I rescued the ball. The next situation is just a perfect example of keeping the right distance. Attack the player with the ball only if you are 100% sure that you will rescue the ball. Here it worked just perfectly. So to sum up, defending isn't easy. It requires a lot of practice. Just remember what I told you in this episode. Try to use it in your own games. Thanks for watching and see you in the next part. Welcome to the last part of the course, in which I will show you the most effective skill moves in FIFA 21. I decided to show you only 5 of them, because to be honest, these 5 skill moves are more than enough to become a good FIFA player. So let's begin with fake shot. In my opinion, one of the easiest and most effective skill moves in FIFA 21. All you need to do is tap square X button and then as quickly as possible tap X A button. You can also 
Use your left stick to change directions of this skill move. Fake shot can be used in every part of the pitch. It is quite hard to predict. So, I mean, use it as often as possible. You can see many examples in which fake shot was decisive and I scored an easy goal after using it. So, moving forward, let's focus on double air one press. As the name suggests, <laughs> All you need to do is to double press R1 RB button as quickly as possible. Your player will kick the ball and start running with his maximum speed. It makes a huge problem for defenders because they have to accelerate in order to achieve a maximum sprint speed. That's why using this option can make a huge difference in your games. Next, we have the brand new option in FIFA 21, the L3+. L3 plus R3 trick. It is quite uh, hard to explain it, but I will do my best. All you need to do is tap both right and left sticks at the same time and then use your right stick to switch the player you want to control. Then run through an enemy's defense and tap triangle Y or XA button in order to receive the ball. It isn't easy and requires a lot of practice, but in my opinion it's worth it. Most of the times your opponents will be confused because people don't use it too often. The next skill move we'll focus on is ball roll. To perform it you need to hold the right stick to the direction you want your player to move. It's very simple and very effective. You can use it everywhere on the pitch to beat the defender or even the goalkeeper. You can see on the following examples, one simple trick can change the whole situation on the pitch within a second. So the last skill move is called heel to heel. You can perform it with your right stick by tapping it to the direction you run and then quickly to the opposite direction. It's a little bit hard to explain, so I hope you can see it on your screens. You can perform this skill move everywhere with players uh, who, who have at least 3 star skill moves. The beauty of this move is that it gives you additional speed boost and moreover the ball is protected. That is why pretty much the only way the defender can intercept is by foul. So try to learn all these skill moves, they are really important part of the game. I hope you enjoyed this episode and the whole course as well. Unfortunately it's the last episode, I hope that you have learned a lot and that I helped you in understanding the game better. I'm sure you will make an instant progress. So thanks a lot for watching and good luck in your future games, take care.